Also, if you go to Genesis, I mean Revelation uh, 15, let me get there with you. Look at verse 3. And they're singing, this is the last song. Remember a few days ago I showed you a chart of all the, the songs and all the prayer, the worship offered in Revelation, the, the 14 of them. This is the last one of the songs. Remember, the angels don't sing until after this is finished, but the saints are singing, and they're singing, wow, great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty, verse 3, true and just are your ways, O King of the saints. Wow, what a, this is the final song of scriptures. It's amazing. And then in verse 5, Jesus Christ is victorious. Now, what I, what I love about this is, and as you're getting to read it, after these things I looked. Remember, John is witnessing all this, and he's recording it. He's like, an, he's like one of those uh, reporters that are standing at whatever event, you know, whether it's a storm or the, the tornado or the hurricane or whatever. He's reporting, and they're telling the eyewitness account. He's saying, I looked, and behold, verse 5, the temple, the tabernacle, the testimony in heaven was open, and out of the temple came seven angels having seven plagues clothed in pure bright linen. By the way, when you... Ever you see someone in heaven, what do they look like? Very modest. You should think about that. When God is directly in charge of the dress code, there's no question. God invented clothing. Clothing is not for show. It's for modesty. And it's a choice all of us make as believers. Whether we want our clothing to reflect God, or our clothing to reflect the God of this world. And every day, when you get dressed, you're reflecting either God or the God of this world, Satan. Very interesting. But how did we get on that? Because they're wearing, look at this, they're clothed in pure bright linen. They have their chest girded with golden bands. And one of the four living creatures gave the seven angels seven golden bowls full of wrath, the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. And here it is. The temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God, from his power. And no one could enter the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. Wow. It's... It's interesting how it says that he saw this amazing, I mean, in, in verse 4, I mean, I, I didn't read that. Let me back up. Uh, and I saw something like a sea of glass in verse 2, mingled with fire, and those who had the victory over the beast, over his image, over his mark, and over the number of his name, standing in the sea of glass, having harps of gold. And then they're the ones singing. This whole scene, I mean, chapter 15, I hope, in your 10 choices, maybe some of you will pick chapter 15, is loaded with stuff. This, this is what I wrote. Actually, this, this Jesus Christ is victorious note is actually going back to the song in verse 3 as well as all the way to 7. But look what I wrote. Now I want to show you the triumph that the patience of Christ produces. I saw something like a sea of glass. It's not an actual sea of glass, but it's like a sea of glass. I don't know what it is, and we shouldn't try and figure it out, but it's crystal clear, and it in indicates the holiness of God. Nothing is hidden. That's what glass, that's why see-through. Nothing is hidden. It's all clear. But look at this. Mingled with fire. That scene, remember I told you there's a river of fire flowing out. I didn't tell you. Daniel told you in Daniel 7, verses 9 and 10, that out from the steps going up to the throne of God is a river of fire flowing. And so all that, look, it's mingled with fire. It's kind of reflecting in this, this crystal glass stuff. It speaks of the fire of persecution, the fire of refinement through which these saints have gone. They have victory. See what it says? They have victory over the beast uh, and over the number of his name and over his image, all that stuff. So they, they went through all that persecution. And now they're standing on that sea of glass and God gives them harps. That's where the whole thing about just sitting around having playing a harp comes from, because we see these harps. But look at what I wrote. This is what I mean by you can apply this to your life. From a human perspective, all the people standing on that sea, if you really read carefully what it says, 
were simply killed on earth. And that's the end of them. See, that's how humanly people look at it. Well, all those people got killed. But that's not how God portrays them. That's our humanness. What Jesus already said is whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. These people are standing, these martyrs are standing on that that crystal sea that's got this fire reflected in it, and, and they're put on display before the God of the universe, and he said, these people did what my son said. They didn't go through life trying to save every ounce of their life to have the best time possible, the most comfortable, convenient, secure life possible. Do you remember John Piper, the, the, the great Christian writer that's always stirring us up with what he writes? Do you remember he wrote his little book, you know, Don't Waste Your Life? You might have missed it. You know, it was maybe 20 years ago. And what he does is he tells a story of, of two older women. Both were in medical profession, and they both, when they reached retirement age, because they had done so well, one a doctor and one a, I don't know, a nurse, I don't know what, but they went to Africa, because in America you're too old to work in the system, you're 65 or whatever it was. So they went to Africa and volunteered in one of these needy clinics, and they were driving a missionary vehicle, and you know what most missionary vehicles are, after a car wears out, we donate it, you know, to the mission. You wouldn't give them a new one. you give them the one that wears out. So they were driving this old worn-out car that someone donated to the mission in Africa, and they were rounding a corner on a mountain road, and the brakes gave out, and their car kept going, and it went off the edge, and the American newspaper said, great tragedy in Africa. Two re- you know, past retirement age women, medical professionals, were in a car in the brakes field, and they tragically died. And Piper said, tragically died? What part was a tragedy? He said they, they gave the, their lives to the Lord. They served him with the neediest people and they got nothing back in return. And they were even driving dumpy stuff because that's all that was available. And they offered their lives for me. So he said, you know what the real tragedy is? And then he reads an article about a couple from Boston, Massachusetts that had a high-tech company that cashed in and sold it at the high part And in their 50s, they made millions and mega millions from their high-tech company, and they bought a beautiful yacht, they had every accoutrement, and they spent their life sailing around all the beautiful parts of the world collecting seashells. And Piper's whole book goes like this. He said, which do you think is going to count in heaven? The elderly two ladies that died in the crash after offering everything they had to Christ And they come up and stand in front of the throne and say, this is what we did for you. Or that American dream couple that spent their life collecting shells, and they said, oh, Lord, look at all these shells we collected in our lives and our suntan because we sailed the world. And there's nothing wrong with suntans or shells or sailing. There's everything wrong with looking at life that is measured by how much fun and comfort, and convenience, and security I can have. Did you know most of the things we do for the Lord are uncomfortable, they are very insecure, and they are very inconvenient? I know. I mean, I I had two daughters that for the last 12, 14 years, they've been living in the jungles of Central America with all the army ants. I mean, they, they would tell us, they say, we were walking home the other night, my one daughter said, And as we walked, it felt soft like we were on carpet. And we wondered, oh boy, I wonder what that is. And we got back into our house and the army ants, a river of them this wide, had had crossed across where their house is. And they were actually walking on army ants. You know, those fire ants, those red, they really bite. And so that was one time. You know what the next time they said? One of my daughters says, hey, I woke up and the army ants this time had come up the side of our house, in through the eaves, you know, they, they are very loosely constructed, down the wall a foot wide, and they just cut across the corner of the bed, and I could feel them, but they never got out of line, I could feel them brushing against my head, and when I woke up and looked, they were going up the wall and out the other side of the house. Did you know that's quite inconvenient to live that way? With scorpions? They can't even get out of bed without 
turning on their, they have uh, those UV light or black lights or whatever you call them and scorpions glow in the dark. So before you get out of bed, you take your flashlight and go like this and see if there's a spot you can put your feet so you can walk to the bathroom and not step on one. And then you come back with a hammer and you go and kill them. See, that's very inconvenient. But boy, does that matter when you stand in front of Christ. Think about these people as a picture. The earth would say they just died, kind of like those women going off the corner of the road in Africa, but God said no. They saying a new song, great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty, and we got to be a part of it, just and true are your ways, even though we got martyred, it's good. Verse 4, who should not fear you, Lord God, and glorify your name, that's what we want to do, for all the nations will come and worship before you, and we were part of it. They were part of bringing all the nations to Christ. From a human perspective, all the people standing in the sea were simply killed, and that was the end of them, but not to God. And by the way, what God thinks is what matters.